All right, so uh, thanks, Patrick. So this actually covers the first part of um, the bring up of the system, right? We were talking about automated provisioning from the time you power on up until your services start running. So uh, support for community tools becomes really important in this case. Now, you, of course, there are APIs available. You can create your own uh, infrastructure to be able to um, programmatically access the box and do whatever you need. Uh, but uh, as with any industry, and there are folks, um, especially in the automation community, in the network automation community, <coughs> that are doing some really good work. And Napalm is a very good example of that. Um, and we've had a lot of work, of course, happening on Ansible, Puppet, et cetera. And a lot of uh, customers use them in their workflows. So it therefore becomes imperative for us to support these tools from the get-go. And um, Chef, uh, incidentally, is one that hasn't really come up as a use case in most customer uh, scenarios. However, we do support the client. We've just not published any modules for it. So if there is an ask, we'll actually go ahead and create some new modules for that. Um, that isn't really a problem because the, the basic infrastructure is already modeled and it has all the APIs available. We just have to create a module that uh, invokes it. Um, so in case of Ansible, the first link shows the modules that we have been maintaining for a while. Uh, since almost the inception of 600. Uh, but in addition to that, Ansible Core is getting a large number of modules. The one that we were waiting for is the NetConf module so that you can use model APIs directly. And that's coming up in March, as I understand. However, the NetConf module is already in our Cisco maintained one, so you can certainly leverage that if, you, if the Ansible Core doesn't have it. Have you uh, had any requests for um, SALT? Uh, yeah, so that's becoming progressively more important, uh, and uh, we're actually going to look at that uh, fairly soon in terms of publishing modules. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. So I'll start including that in the slide deck soon. Um, Puppet Labs, uh, of course, the Puppet client is available. It is maintained uh, by the vendor, Puppet, uh, themselves. And uh, the modules are, again, on GitHub. We've only published the model one version for this because that was the only initial requirement that, was, that came to us. Um, bear in mind that you don't, we don't actually have to create a module in each of these uh, tools for the CLI operations. Right. Patrick just went over ZTP, ZTP hooks. So any uh, conflict management tool connecting to the Linux shell of XR has access to all of those APIs. So you don't actually need to wrap up a module for Ansible. All it needs to do is SSH into the box and issue an XR CMD, and it works. Right? So Ansible doesn't need one. So that is why we've... Um, made sure that ZTP in itself has a wide range of APIs available so that you can do all CLI operations from the shell. And once that is done, Ansible, Puppet, Chef, etc., basically can do everything from the box from the get-go. You don't need modules. Uh, but for Yang, etc., which is usually off the box that you will have to work with, or even if it's on the box, it's for clients like Chef, uh, we do publish modules. That's why Chef will be coming soon. Puppet has it. Uh, Yang Development Kit, that's another community tool. Um, this is probably the biggest project that's going on right now. Uh, we've basically created, if, you've, uh, if you understand how gRPC works, for example, where you can create bindings for protobuf <coughs> ideas, then YDK is the equivalent for Yang models, right? So uh, all of the vendors that create Yang models, put the Yang model through the YDK gen tool. It will create bindings in a large number of uh, programming languages for you. So you will get Python objects, Go objects, uh, C++ objects that you can then directly start uh, coding up in. So you do not have to spin up your own NC client, put everything in XML, send a, send a request, etc. You work purely in Python or purely in C++ or Golang or whatever you need. So the, the YDK infrastructure has become progressively more and more important within the industry as folks realize that you really don't need to do the underlying stuff when your core code is about using the model. In addition to that, Pipeline, Victor will cover that. Pipeline is the open source collector that we created, uh, which basically talks to uh, XR over gRPC and receives telemetry data in real time. Uh, I won't cover that for now. And XR gRPC is a really good library uh, written by one of uh, the folks who uh, work with us, um, Nicola. And it is a gRPC library that can do everything on XR, which includes all the model-driven APIs, uh, telemetry, service layer APIs that I'll touch upon, and all the layers of the stacks and monitoring happens through a single library. So if anything, XR has become completely gRPC uh, compatible. Right? So if you just want to use gRPC, you can do everything on the box. Oh, and by the way, gRPC also supports CLI if you want it, but uh, we would recommend using models. <laughs> Telemetry, I'm, I'm going to skip that. It is obvious that Victor will basically cover most of it. And the last part that I want to look at is the uh, service layer API. 
I did mention this initially. I've covered this another tech field earlier, where effectively this is what the network stack looks like, right? So you have all your management layer stuff, CLI, SNMP, um, your models, syslog, SSH, everything at this top layer. The protocol stack, the network infrastructure layer, that is your RIB label switch database. So the protocols communicate with those, and these guys communicate with the hardware. The, the basic uh, tenet of what we're trying to build here is to give you a model-driven API at every layer of the stack. It is a gradual process, but uh, what we have right now already is, of course, Yang models for everything that you can do in CLI. We have Yang models here, both for monitoring as well as for um, configuration that you want to do. And that's available over NetConf and gRPC, and you can use YDK on top of that as well if you want to completely abstract it. Uh, the application protocol stack, there will be something coming up there. It's not there yet. However, the most interesting one that we've recently released in last September is the service layer API. Uh, the service layer, as this indicates, uh, is the network infrastructure layer of the system. Uh, so we are giving you direct hooks into the RIB, into the label switch database, into interface and BFD notifications. So this does not go through XR SysDB. It goes directly into these systems and it works over gRPC. So what you're really getting is a super fast connection to these uh, infrastructure layers. As an example, uh, with this particular connection, I am able to push routes at the rate of 38,000 routes per second into the XR RIP using my own client, which is connecting over gRPC. <coughs> Just as a data point, most of the hardware devices that we have, the ASIC can only do 12,000 routes per second. So with these APIs, the software is never going to be the bottleneck in terms of doing route downloads or label uh, imposition, et cetera. So that is the service layer API, and it is available over gRPC. These are the different models. It is, uh, because it's over gRPC, again, you can create bindings in all the languages of your choice, uh, Golang, C++, um, Python, and more. And because it is RPC-based, so unlike some of the other vendors, we can do on-box and off-box. So if you have a protocol that you want to run on the box, it can use gRPC on box. If you have a controller that is sitting outside, it can use gRPC off box. Um, your code becomes identical. Where you post is up to you, right? And that's pretty much it. This is the link to all of the data on GitHub as well as on um, XR Docs for what can be done with the system. And the last part is the demo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run XR BGP on top of OpenR running as an IGP on XR. So think of OpenR as the, um, as the application that I'm going to spin up. And it's going to utilize all of these different things that I just spoke about. Packet IO, because it has to send packets out of the box. So all its adjacencies and hellos go through Packet IO. Application hosting is going to be spun up in a Docker container, right? So that is important. Service layer APIs, I just spoke about that. So I've already modified the code for OpenR to directly hook into XR service layer API. So now it programs the XR rib. Streaming telemetry. Uh, so uh, we get real-time data of the IPv6 neighbors that are learned by XR, and that data goes to OpenR. So OpenR knows how to react to those events. Interface notifications also come from service layer API. I indicated that earlier. We're thinking of maybe putting the IPv6 neighbor notifications in service layer, but not sure yet. And the BGP Yang model, uh, in the demo, of course, we will use uh, Ansible to uh, configure BGP for us. So this is what it's going to look like. Um, the code where I have allowed OpenR to work with XR using the API that we have is on GitHub. Uh, it's not final yet. I will be uh, showcasing it at Nano coming up. However, um, it, you can get it running already. I just have to finish the documentation for it. Uh, the idea is basically this. So OpenR runs in a container on the box, <coughs> uses packet IO for packet sending, service layer API for RIB and interface, and XR telemetry to get the IPv6 neighbors, right? And we can do a lot, other, a lot more hooks. So purely because our API is so exhaustive, we can get things like BFD notifications into OpenR pretty soon. We can give OpenR the capability to add labels into uh, XR, things that it does not have, right? So uh, the API being exhaustive and really simple to use allowed us to do this like within a month of them releasing it. And this is the website I'd like you guys to maybe take a look at and follow us on Twitter if you want. Uh, this is, we keep on creating new tools and documentation on everything that we're doing, and it all gets published here and gets tweeted out on uh, Twitter. All right, so let me jump in. Now, this is a live demo, so I'm certainly hoping it works out, but it's not let's. Gonna work. Come on. Uh, come on. <laughs> okay. 
So what has happened is we triggered ZTP earlier, right? Now, this is, these are my logs that came in. As you can see, the last one that I received from one of the routers is a ZTP complete. Sorry about this. Uh, ZTP complete and, of course, logs for everything else that it did uh, before that, right? Getting a cron job, setting it up, um, getting the config file for OpenR so that it knows what to run. And before that, a bunch of other things with respect to Docker setup as well as configuration setup on XR. So when I go back to the device, this is the entire config that was applied by ZTP for me, right? So I have gRPC setup, I have Netcon setup, I can use that to do model-driven APIs, um, and the same thing has happened on both of them. Now, there's no BGP configuration right now, so what I will do first is configure BGP using Ansible. So let me jump to this guy. Okay, and uh, I have a very simple one. I've not complicated this at all. It's just sending a single hook for me, which is um, using the provider that we already have called ISXR Netcon Client 1.1. And uh, you just give it the XML file and it'll go ahead and program the box for you. Um, so let me run this. Okay, cool. So I got an okay RPC reply from each of the routers. Um, let me go back to the routers quickly and show you the BGP config. It was just applied. It was not there earlier, as you can see. Um, so I've got uh, both the guys configured for BGP, which is awesome. However, BGP is going to peer over the loopbacks, and uh, the routers do not know about each other's loopbacks. So as a result, if I do a show BGP summary, uh, it's idle, as expected. <coughs> now I have to figure out how to give them uh, each other's loopbacks. And for that reason, I'm, I already, my ZTP script already pulled an OpenR image in here. Here I've already added uh, the code to interface with service layer APIs with XR. Uh, so this contains everything, and as I mentioned earlier, Docker image is running in parallel to XR. And uh, this guy, uh, basically, uh, I have to now spin up the container itself, so there's no container running right now. And I'm going to use Ansible to do that as well. So are you going to, is, so when you create the loopbacks, are you going to create it as part of Ansible, or are you going to have the container sp configure those? So uh, the, the loopbacks, uh, okay, so OpenAI is going to come up. And the loopbacks are going to be distributed using OpenR. OpenR, okay. So think of OpenR just like you would think of OSPF or ISI. Right, okay. It's performing it's that protocol. operation. It's just protocol. Okay. Just a protocol. Okay. All right. Okay, so there was no container running. So now you can see it just got the hash of the container that it spun up. Uh, let's see what's happening now. So I've got OpenR container running. Um, Again, on router two, I've got the OpenR container running. And in addition to that, let me go back to my routing table. Do you see an A route at the bottom? Mm -hmm. That is what an application route looks like. So OpenR was able to share the loopbacks. Uh, it got the loopback of router two, and it programmed the, uh, through the service layer API, it programmed the rib. And as soon as it did that, Let's see what happens to show BGP summary, and it's up for 25 seconds, yeah. right? So basically, we've replaced a traditional IGP with an IGP that Facebook open sourced, right? And uh, just as a pointer in terms of the API and the amount of time that it took us, it was about a month, right? So uh, the APIs are very exhaustive and allows us to do this really quickly. Yeah. 